The Blue Island by W. T. Stead, read for you by Blue Friend in beautiful B.C. Chapter 12 I come now to the last days on the Blue Island, and the taking up of our residence on the next and far more permanent world. The Blue Island is a transient life, a land for acclimatizing the newcomer, and as soon as he's fit, he passes from it to what I might term the real world, inasmuch as each person will be much longer on it than anyone has yet been on earth. We can, at will, return to the Blue Island, and many do so frequently, both to meet newly arrived friends and associates, and to help any person or group with whom we are in sympathy. These are only visits, and we do not ever again return there to live. Travel here is a very different thing to the methods you all know, and we all set out in a large party for the real world. Not our whole party, as on first arrival. Many weren't ready to leave, but with us were many other spirit people besides those with whom we had originally arrived. There was the same sensation of flying, moving rapidly through the air. Then we came to our new home. After the color and generally striking appearance of the Blue Island, this new land appeared less attractive at the outset. It was more toneless in color, the people more engrossed in their regular routine. It seemed as if we had returned to earth life again, it was so like it. I think, on arrival here, we must all have been attracted to different parts of this land, for my own seemed strikingly like parts I had known on earth, and there were also buildings that I knew. Other people have told me the same, so I'm confident that, according to our race and degree of development, so we are automatically attracted to different parts of this new world. It is in this land that I and most of our people are, and certainly all will be, in due course. We continue our studies and our work of developing spiritually, whilst at the same time controlling and dispersing the few still clinging earth habits and thoughts. We are all very much more conscious of each other in this land, and life resumes a much greater similarity to the life we have known on earth. We have our homes in the same way, and our interests in other people, and according to taste, so we are habited together in houses or on the open hillside country. Some people live in very elaborate palaces, and it is very curious to note that many of these people are those who have led very rough and hard lives upon earth. Their idea of heaven is a palace and a life of ease. After a period of time, during which they must make specified progress in general development, these people are given their palaces in order to allow them full advantage of environment, to make forward steps in their evolution. If they don't progress, they lose their palace and must requalify for it. This applies to everyone. Each has to qualify in order to obtain his desired object, and in order to keep it, he must continue his progress and his help to others. When we come to this land, 
we have ceased to desire food, drink, and sleep. We are now pure spirit in the rough state. There's still more refining to be done in the next phase. Here, also, there are rest houses, houses for music, houses for scientific research, houses for all and every kind of information and knowledge, and the entrance fee to each and all of these is desire. We do not lead a life of continual cramming of information. We lead ordinary earth lives, but with a much keener social interest and much more freedom and exchange of thought. There is no distinction of the classes. Our earth life may be forgotten in so far as our individual task on earth is concerned, when that task was a matter of little or no interest to us. It is only the spiritual and mental knowledge and development which hinders and advances the individual here. And spirit knowledge is not hindered by whatever one's job on earth may have been. In this respect, there is great and sudden broadening of the point of view of all comers to this land. It is a land of freedom, a land of happiness and smiles, a land of happiness brought about through the real love of man for man, a land to work for, a land in which your place is made according to the knowledge you have had whilst upon earth, and the way you have used that knowledge. It is impossible to overemphasize the degree of freedom in this new world, or the joy each and every one has in it. In saying that your happiness is gauged by the knowledge acquired on earth and the application of that knowledge, I am saying what is accurate to the smallest detail, but I would like to explain precisely. On being established here, in the real world, each one is interviewed by one of the advanced spirit instructors, and the whole record of earth is discussed and analyzed. Reason, motive, and result. The full and detailed record contains everything. There's nothing overlooked. And this is the time for paying the bill. Each is interviewed alone, and there is a minute analysis of all events, acts, and thoughts. Then there's the making good to be gone through, the sum total to be paid for all our thoughtlessness and our unkind acts and words. All that have had direct results must be paid for. We have then to spend time in close touch with earth in order by influence to make good for our past misdoings. Make good as far as possible. Also, we have the knowledge and full sight of the results of these earlier acts, and they do not bring happiness. But after that state is past, and we can bring all these things into proper perspective and form a table of work, which will gradually and continually be working out results and troubles we have caused, then we can each one settle down to live here in freedom. The form of life differs here enormously according to temperament, personality, and the influence of earth life. People vary in strange contrast to one another. Many of us carry on with our same work as on earth. Here we have no need to work 
in order to obtain daily livelihood, we work here solely for spiritual refinement and progress. At the same time, we keep in touch with our earth interests as a form of recreation. We are not always, without any break, in one house or another, studying this, that, and the other. We have a certain program to go through, but it has many breaks, and in this off-duty time, we come back to our dear people on earth, and either out of interest and love, or from the desire to be useful, we try our utmost to help them in their material and mental difficulties. We have every form of recreation here, as I've already told you, when dealing with the Blue Island. Any habit or hobby formed on earth can be indulged in here, always providing it is progressive. From this, you can understand that life after death is a very normal and natural affair. We have still our affections, and those which last are still strongly binding links. Between family and friends, we have the same affections, and yet not the same because sometimes on earth there are differences which cause a silence between members of a family, and perhaps over here that family will once more be very united, the earth differences being based solely upon material things. Once remove the material and physical, and underneath the love often remains. One great change which death brings is a much broader point of view and a much larger mind, a deeper understanding, a keener intuition, clears away immediately many former difficulties and misunderstandings. Once on this real world, and once past the first initiation and payment of debts, we are free to do as we wish, but we have to progress, or we ourselves curtail our liberties. It is not an enforced progress. We can take our own time about everything. But we must not allow any of Earth's instincts to increase in their power over us. We have to learn the new conditions and live for them entirely. Once free, we can travel at will over our own world and over yours. So great is our speed and method of travel that we can be in two places almost simultaneously. Everywhere we go, we are conscious of the general love for one another. It is much more evident than on earth, and that great affection is the direct cause of the general brightness and radiance of this world. I do mean that it gives off rays of lights, but rather than the general atmosphere is light in quality and very invigorating and strength-giving. Life here is a grander thing, a bolder thing, and a happier thing for all those who have led reasonable lives on earth. But for the unreasonable, there are many troubles and difficulties and sorrows to be encountered. There is a great truth in the saying that, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Chapter 13 General Results I have been away from my earth life now a number of years, and although I have been in constant and unbroken touch with my old conditions and affections, 
I have never, since leaving the Blue Island, had any desire to return to the earth for habitation. There have been many occasions when I have, very badly, wanted a tongue for a few hours. With my extra sight, I have known the right treatment when seeing certain situations being mishandled. At such times, I have very badly wanted to return to earth for an hour, in order to be the means of bringing about great improvements. Beyond these passing desires, I have had no wish ever to take up residence on earth. My travels and my works and studies on this side of the grave have been of such vital interest. Since being here, I have acquired greater knowledge and have been able to pass to earth people some of that knowledge at different times. Ever since my leaving the world, or your world, I have been keenly interested in its development and very live to all its internal and external difficulties. Patriotism still holds with me, as with most of us, and will continue to hold so long as I have personal ties upon earth. When there are no longer any of these personal ties remaining, my interests will gradually and naturally turn more exclusively to this side among my own people, and my place will be filled by another. And so the race goes on, always moving forward, progressing and evolving. Looking back on it all since I first came to the Blue Island, I have great satisfaction in seeing the advance I have made. Coming here was quite a shock to me. I had no idea that my death was so near when that particular year began, and I certainly had no desire that it should be soon. I had an overwhelming number of important things on my hands. Some of these have been able to be finished since, and I have followed the progress of many others. Soon after arrival, I had grown acclimatized to the new conditions, the new appearance of everything, the new power of locomotion and communication. We do not talk to each other very much here. We have a more expressive and intimate way than that. Here, thoughts are communicated from one mind to another without the need of vocal expression, although we can talk in earth manner at will. There are, of course, many and vast differences between my world and yours, but I always find one of the most blessed and merciful differences between the two to be the manner in which the mental is unhindered by the physical. You, on earth, have mental desires and ambitions of various kinds, for money, success in business, pleasure, power, knowledge, etc. But always these desires are limited, cramped, often made impossible owing to your physical condition. Here, when the mental desire is good, the field is unlimited. Any mental desire for truth, knowledge, be it what it may, can be gratified in a most astonishing manner in this world. Be it good or bad, it will bring its results, and if the desire is bad, it will grow in power and must be paid for. If good, it will grow in power also and will bring strength and happiness with it. I cannot emphasize to you too much that as you are, so you will be. You are now 
whilst on earth, making your bodies for your next conditions. These are built up by your present lives on the quality of your thoughts. This world, which I have been in a long time now, is the closest thing imaginable to your earth. It is full of mineral, vegetable, animal, and all forms of life. All the animals you have loved on earth and educated to understanding will be with you here. Those other animals who belong to no one in particular are here too, but they are in their own places. You will say, oh, then it is only a reflection of our world. It is not that way. The earth is only a reflection of this world. Earth is not the lasting world. It is the training school. You are not only on earth to amass riches and enjoy life just for what it is. You are there to learn the truth about your own character and how to control and develop it to make full use of all earth's beauties and pleasures. But you must be master and not allow them to master you. As I have said, looking back on my life here, I am satisfied with what has been done both in the personal and individual way and the bigger way. We spirit people have made great advances in our communication with Earth. We have been greatly and enormously helped by the physical strength of the spirits of all the young men and women who passed over during the recent fighting all over the world. Not only English, but all. They brought with them great physical power and determination, and we have been able through this power to break down many of the barriers which keep the two worlds apart. These truths do not conform with the ideas of many people, but that is no reason for saying they're not true. Truth is sometimes unexpected and none too pleasant, but it is always the most powerful and will make itself known no matter whether it brings pleasure or pain. Go, each one of you, in reality or imagination, to the edge of a high cliff overlooking the sea. Let it be a bright, starry, frosty night, and go alone. Stand there and meditate. Look down upon the lights of any harbor or anchored boats and think. Then look up to the stars. You know where you are, and you are fully conscious of the flickering and movement of the lights on the boats. You can see them. You are only a little way off, and perhaps you could make them hear if you called, but it would be easier to wait till the darkness breaks when they can see you without any effort on your part. That is how we spirit people are conscious of those left behind, some willing to wait, others fighting and struggling to make themselves heard, it is only a little way from earth, and between this, our spirit state and the great universe, there is as much distance as between you on the cliff and the farthest star. We are only a little way on our journey. Nothing yet forgotten. Love still remaining. Chapter 14 The Great Ultimate My life here has been a very normal, healthy, and interesting affair, just as my life on earth was. 
I've been invested with no powers generally attributed to spirits and fairies. I am still just an ordinary man with an ordinary, plain, blunt outlook on life. The change has in no way altered me. The only change there is in me is my greater ability to move speedily and to act quickly. I am rejuvenated, and this is a condition which becomes more marked as time goes on. Many people who give thought to these subjects, no matter what their particular point of view may be, ask the question, To where is it all leading? What is to be our ultimate state? This is a question of extreme difficulty to deal with on account of the limitations of the mind, both yours and ours. I have explained to you that, as you are, so you will be when you come here. When here, you will qualify for a further state, which will be your lot in due time, and there you will be exactly as you have made yourself by your life here. Better or worse, happy or unhappy, from that you will go to a further state another sphere, if you like, and there again you will have made your own conditions. In this further state you will be more self-contained, a word I use to express a state of being less dependent upon other people and things for development and progress. In this sphere you will again come in contact with your whole record. A record in full of all former states, and from this sphere, if your record is qualified to the point of allowing it, you will be given the choice of returning to earth again, reincarnating. If your record does not qualify for choice in this matter, you will be directed either to return or to continue according to what the teachers consider will afford you most opportunity for recreating yourself and cleansing yourself in the necessary way. It is from this sphere that spirits return to earth, but by the time the most progressed spirit has reached this state, he's forgotten in detail his association with earth. I cannot give the shortest period of time which would be necessary to reach this sphere, but the sojourn in the real world after the Blue Island is a much longer period than that of mortal life, and in each sphere, as progress is made, the sojourn is longer. The spirits who have reached this return or stay sphere, and are purified and qualified in themselves, those who stand the tests and pass out as grade one, pass to another and altogether different and lighter land, and each becomes impersonal. Impersonal in the sense that they are no longer Jack Brown or Marjorie Black. They are now pure spirit people, and their former love, which had been a personal and individual thing, is no longer for one, but equally for all. All are alike to all. The purest tissue of God's love binds one and all. I have given a brief outline sufficient for you to form your own ideas, your own mental pictures of creation and its process. There would be no point in my going further into details, because if I were to give the facts, you could not understand the conditions ruling in those advanced states. I am not able fully to understand them myself, 
for, as I've said, I am only a little way on my journey, but just far enough to grasp the intense beauty of life and in life, as one standing on a higher point than yourselves, and able to see a little more than you can see, I can best explain to you that in these further states you receive not merely fifty or sixty or even a hundred percent out of your lives in happiness and joy, but you receive comparatively six hundred percent. This is simply a graphic way of indicating the degree of happiness that obtains here. Were I able to describe all the processes of our evolution, many would say, Oh, I don't want that. But when progress has been made, and intelligence brightened, and reality seen as reality, not as imagination, they will want it. If I said to an old man in a wheelchair, that he could have a motorcycle, he'd say he preferred his wheelchair. But if he were to be a young, robust boy of nineteen again, which do you suppose he'd choose? This is the underlying principle. Do you think that this scheme of the world is hateful? and unkind, and full of continual partings from all other spirits, who are dear to each individually? I have said that there are no partings. It is always possible and customary for spirits to keep in close touch with each other on this side. When the highest states of the impersonal are reached, there are no partings from dear ones, only a wider opening of that same door of love, a higher, purer love, a golden or God love, to admit not one or two or twenty, but to embrace all. Chapter 15 Christ and spiritualism. Unfortunately, the word spiritualism has been associated with so many misconceptions that it affords scope for misinterpretation, and for this reason thousands of people misunderstand the word and suppose that it deals only with forms of fortune-telling and chicanery of all kinds and must necessarily be wrong and dangerous therefore the work of antichrist for this reason it is a barred subject not only do these people know nothing about it but they are so horrified at the travesty they themselves have created that they would refuse to hear or see or read a word upon the subject. To all people who have knowledge of spiritualism, this attitude is tiresome and regrettable. Nevertheless, it exists today and in great force. In my concluding chapter I want to say a few simple words on this point. Spiritualism is not the work of Antichrist. All the teachings of Christ are to be found in the teachings of spiritualism. Christ taught love amongst mankind generous thought and generous help for one another, love thy neighbor as thyself, and so on. Spiritualism teaches these same doctrines. Christ was imbued with the divine spirit, and he laid down laws upon which his disciples were to model their lives and their work, and in those laws 
you will find the laws which govern spiritualism. Because one of the disciples was a dishonest weak man, and because some of the workers since then, workers in the churches of various and many creeds, have been and are to this day weak and sinful in their lives, you do not, any of you, think for one moment that the whole is bad and evil. You realize that the teachings of Christ were of the highest. Always he spoke of love as the binding link and the force of all good. I want you to understand, perhaps for the first time, that spiritualism is based upon the same foundations. All its rules are rules given by Christ himself. All the creeds existing upon earth are based upon these same rules. They vary in minor points considerably. What one will allow another will condemn, and it is for the individual to decide which particular one of all is most fitting to himself. By his choice he will show his ability to grasp the meaning of God's laws, and according to his development, so will he select. The teachings of all alike are limited, but some go farther, see farther, understand more, just as all roads may converge to a given point, so many creeds follow in the main the teachings of Christ. Some by narrow little roads and byways, some by wide roads, and some by main highways. Spiritualism is God's main highway. The End of Blue Island by W. T. Stead Read for you by Blue Friend in beautiful B.C.